Hello! In this video, we're going to take a brief tour through Onshape's pattern features. These can be very useful if you have one feature, one extrusion or cut or something, that you want to make a whole bunch of copies of. So you don't want to spend, you know, hours and hours making a whole bunch of copies of the exact same thing, because the computer can do that for you, can't it? That's exactly what features are for. I'm going to show you three different types of pattern today, and I have three parts to dem demonstrate them with. First of all, I have a really basic, ugly-looking hacksaw here. It's, you know, a blade here and a handle here, and if I zoom way in here, I have one little notch cut out of the blade. That's just one um, remove extrusion to cut one little notch out of the blade. Ugh. I want to make a pattern out of that. I want to make copy after copy after copy of that notch going brrr, all the way down to the end of the blade, all the way down here to make my hacksaw blade, make all the teeth. So what I'm going to do is pick linear pattern up here. There's three different kinds of pattern in this drop down. I want the linear pattern. So that's if you want to make copies of things going along in a line. And you can also, I guess I'll show you, you can go along in two directions too. But that I'll show you in a little bit. Now, the linear pattern has several different kinds you can do. You can do a part pattern, which is if you want to make copy after copy of a whole part. I actually don't think we're going to use that very much. You can do feature patterns, which makes copy after copy after copy of a feature. And there are face patterns, which you can are sort of a difficult to use version of a feature pattern a little bit. It's difficult for you, but it's a little faster for the computer. So if you're making a whole bunch of copies of a pattern, if you have a whole bunch of instances, maybe you would need to use a face pattern, but we're not going to use a face pattern for this particular part anyway. So I pick feature pattern, and it wants to know which features... You could use more than one. I want to pattern. I just want one, this initial tooth cutout. So I'll select that, and it wants to know which direction it should go along making copies in. Sometimes you might need to draw, you might need to sketch a line in a separate sketch to do this, but fortunately I have a line built in right here, the edge of the blade, so I'm just going to pick that. Ugh. Oh no. I forgot to select the direction box first. You have to click inside the box before you can do that. There we go. Now if I zoom out here, you see it's trying to make a copy of the copy of the thing right there. And actually, it says it has a problem. Yeah, it needs me to say apply per instance. That's better. Sometimes, if your pattern doesn't work, you just need to select Apply Per Instance. And it wants to know how far apart these should be. I think my tooth is like 0.05 inches wide. So I'm going to type 0.05. There, that's perfect. And then I need to guess how many, uh, how many copies of that I need. I think this blade is 12 inches long, so let's see if I can type in 12 in divided by 0 0.05. Of course, it wouldn't be in for this because it's a count. It's a number of things. Wouldn't be inches. There, that looks good. If I zoom way in here, this part was 12 inches long, but there's another, like, one inch at the tip. So maybe I need to make it 13. Let's 
this is the part that would be a little faster with the face pattern. There, that's perfect. Goes right out to the end. I'll just give that a name. And there, now my hacksaw is done. At least the blade is done, has all its teeth on it. It's a little hard to see unless you zoom in, but that's just about perfect, I think. So now I'm going to... Well, I'll show you one more thing, I guess. Remember I said you can go in two directions with a linear pattern? Basically, you can fill out a box. Instead of just going along in a line, you can fill up a whole box. If I check second direction here, and then let's say I click on this line, I put in, say, four instances here. Just to show you what that does, it's going to take a second to think about it. It's thinking. Oh, maybe I should have used a face pattern anyway, because this is really going kind of slow. Oh, there we are. See, one inch above here, see, it put copies of that cut up in here. So you can, you can go up with the whole line of them, you can go up in, an, in another direction. I don't actually want to do that, because that isn't how you make a hacksaw blade. So I'm just going to leave that the way it was and move on to circular patterns here. Now this is supposed to be a salt shaker and see just like the last time a salt shaker needs to have holes in the top so you can get the salt out, right? Just like last time I have one hole here but I still need all the other holes to to make my salt shaker work, because a salt shaker with one hole isn't going to be very good. So, the same thing here. I'm going to go to up here to this sim menu and pull, to pull it down and pick the circular pattern this time. Now, this is the same thing. We need to pick feature pattern or face pattern here. I'll pick feature pattern because there's not going to be all that many holes. This isn't going to be nearly as bad as the hacksaw. And then we need to say which features to pattern. So I'm going to pick initial hole here. And axis of pattern can either be one um, vertical line, like you use for a revolve feature, to tell it what to rev sort of revolve around as it's making copies, or you can just pick a circular edge like this and it'll go around and follow that. And so here we go. I have equal spacing checked, so it spaces the copies equally far apart, and it's going through a whole 360 degrees, and it's making four of them. I want more than four. Let's see, four squared, 16. That actually looks pretty good. I think I'll make 16 holes. There, there's my salt shaker with a nice circular pattern. That was a lot faster. Now, finally, this is a kind... I'm going to move on to a kind of pattern that's actually not built into Onshape by default, but it's... we've found out it's really useful from back when we still used SolidWorks. And I... and we can get it in Onshape, and I want to show it... show it to you right now. This is supposed to be a Buchner funnel. If I show you over here, this is what it's supposed to look like. This is, uh, you might rem be familiar with these from chemistry class. You take, take one of these and put it in the top of a, top of a special Erlenmeyer flask with a vacuum port on it. Let's see. 
see if I can show you a picture of one of the flasks. There we go. Oh, sooner or later it'll load here. Boy, that's awfully expensive. But there, you see, you stick the Buchner funnel into the top of your flask through a stopper and then connect a vacuum hose to the side of the flask. Oh, I don't want to register with you. And it sucks out like you sucking, drinking through a straw. It sucks on that vacuum hose to try and suck water or solvent through the filter. Through You'd put a filter paper on top of this plate in here with all the holes in it, and you'd use the vacuum to make the filtering go faster. So this Buchner funnel is almost finished, but we need more than one filter hole in here again, or it's not going to go very fast. And I showed you in the uh, grand tour of the OnShape interface that you can use this button here to add special feature script things, that you can write your own features in OnShape special feature script code. Well, they have a feature script sample. If I click on feature script samples here, and I'll type in the search box here, fill pattern. They have the feature script fill pattern right here. And unfortunately, this is still a little bit buggy, doesn't work perfectly, which is why it's just a feature script sample and it's not in the toolbar yet. But if I add that to my toolbar and click here, I can, I can use the fill pattern to, what I want to do is make copy after copy of this hole, filling up this whole plate. Like you see in this photo here, I want holes going all over on that whole plate. So this is always a face pattern, unfortunately. So what I'll do is I'll pick the face that's inside of this hole here. So zoom way in so we can see that. Click on that face. And then what you obviously want to do for the target face is pick this top of the the top of this plate right here. And then it also needs to know a direction. So I, I think I, I might need to go back and sketch another line to use for a direction, but maybe I can, yeah, maybe I can use the, my funnel profile sketch here. Maybe I can steal this line for the direction. Okay, that, that's working. Perfect. Sometimes I've found out that if it, if it decides that, if it gives you an error message when you hover over this here that says, oh, those two faces need to intersect, you might find out it works better if you select for target face, go in from the other side and pick the bottom of it. But this is working almost perfectly. See, it's trying to make copies out here where it's not supposed to, but that doesn't hurt anything. I just need to say how far apart I want the holes to be. Half an inch sounds about right to me. And there we go. That looks perfect. So I'm going to call this holes again, or filter holes. And there, I made my Buchner funnel. So that's my fast guide to OnShape's pattern features, including one that you have to, that isn't even built in yet, that someone wrote with the feature script tool. So thank you. I hope that's useful.